Mr. Gates, when did you first become concerned about the competitive threat that Netscape posed to Microsoft? I know by late 95, uh, we were thinking of Netscape as one of our many competitors. So I think it would have been around then. When did you first become concerned about the competitive threat that Java posed to Microsoft? Well, Java as a computer language does not pose a competitive threat to Microsoft. There's some runtime work that various people, companies are doing with different APIs, including Sun, that represent uh, platform competition. So you have to be careful how you talk about Java. Do you talk about Java as a competitive threat to Microsoft, Mr. Gates? There's a lot of documents and understanding inside Microsoft that Java, the language, which if you take the term Java on the face of it and in some context is what it refers to, that that's not a competitive threat. In fact, we are the leading vendor of Java language development tools. Sometimes in the right context, when people use that term, they're talking about various runtime activities. But you, know, you have to look pretty carefully at the context. My question right now doesn't go to what various people within Microsoft um, have said or believe. My question goes to what you have said. Do you refer, have you referred to uh, Java as a competitive threat to Microsoft? The Java runtime activities are a competitive threat to Microsoft. Java itself is not. So if I use the term Java, that way I'm, I'm careful to make sure people know I'm talking about the runtime piece. Have you sometimes, as a shorthand, referred to Java uh, as opposed to what you now say as the Java runtime activities? as a competitive threat to Microsoft. I may have if, if I made it clear what I meant. Uh, and by making it clear uh, what you meant, can you explain what you mean by that? To draw the distinction between Java, the language, and the runtime activities around Java, the APIs being created there by various companies. Have you uh, received email from people that describe Java as a competitive threat to Microsoft? Well, inside Microsoft, the context of the various pieces of Java including in a lot more detail than I, I've had a chance to explain to you so far, is well understood. And so we use a lot of shorthands for a lot of things that confuse people who just look at the emails. Could I have the question read back, please? Have you received email from people that describe Java as a competitive threat to Microsoft?
Under the scenario I described, it's possible that people would do that in email. When you say under the scenario that I described, what scenario are you talking about? The scenario is people with inside Microsoft who have an understanding of the various pieces of Java who are communicating with each other. My question is not what are the circumstances under which it is possible that that happened. My question is, have you received email from people in Microsoft that assert that Java is a competitive threat to Microsoft? It's possible there's someone who's having the right context about the pieces that are entailed in Java may have used that as a shorthand for the piece we consider uh, a competitive threat. My question is not what is possible, but what you recall. If you don't recall uh, ever receiving an email um, in which somebody from Microsoft asserted that Java was a competitive threat. That's an answer to my question. You can say yes, no, I don't recall, but... I don't recall a specific piece of mail. I think there's a good chance that I've received mail where somebody used that kind of shorthand. Um, now, have you used that kind of shorthand? That is, have you personally asserted that Java is a competitive threat to Microsoft. Well, I always object to you acting like the assertion stands by itself. There's a shorthand that I've told you about. So no, I've never asserted that, that statement. We use the term Java in a variety of contexts. And if you want to show me a context, I'll answer. But the assertion on the face of it, it is wrong unless somebody's using the, the term job in a very special way. What I'm asking you, Mr. Gates, is whether you have used Java in what you describe as the very special way to refer as a shorthand to whatever it is that you believe constitutes a competitive threat to Microsoft. I don't remember a specific document where it did, but I think it's quite likely that with certain people I use that shorthand. Okay. Um, uh, when you use Java as a shorthand um, in describing Java as a competitive threat to Microsoft, am I cr to understand that what you mean in that context is to refer to what you have described here as the Java runtime activities? Yeah, if you want to get into what we mean by the shorthand, you'll have to show me a specific context, because sometimes it might mean EJB, sometimes it might just mean the VM, sometimes it might mean AWT, sometimes it might mean JFC. I mean, it, it, but I'll be glad to clarify any particular case. You have to have the context. Um, if necessary, we'll go through each one uh, context by context, although that's obviously a lengthy procedure. But let me see if I can try to um, get some general principles. Um, when you refer to Java as a competitive threat to Microsoft, what do you mean? I've told you it depends on the context. Okay. Um, why don't you list each of the different things that you mean when you describe Java as a competitive threat to Microsoft. I don't know what you mean. You're asking me to recall every context where I might have ever used that shorthand? Well, I'm asking you to tell me every context that you do recall. 
I've told you I don't recall any specific document where I've used the shorthand. I can give you several contexts where it's very likely that I have. If that's the best you can do, let's start with that. Well, there's the context of uh, server middleware APIs, uh, an EJB uh, discussion, and people who write three-tier applications, what APIs are they likely to develop their applications against? And why does Java, in your view, represent a competitive threat to Microsoft with respect to server middleware or EJBs? Now, I've told you that Java itself is not the competitive threat. I'm telling you the thing that is the competitive threat. So when you rephrase it to say Java is the competitive threat, that, that's just the shorthand term. The competitive threat is the APIs in the EJB and the other middleware layers that people are putting together. Well, Mr. Gates, um, in your view, does Java play itself any role in what you view as a competitive threat to Microsoft? Java the language? Yes, let's start with Java the language. No. Okay. Um, uh, when you refer to Java as a competitive threat, why do you use the word Java as shorthand for what you now say doesn't relate to Java? Objection. I didn't say that. It certainly relates to Java. Java runtime relates to Java. I mean, give me a break. Mr. Gates, um, you know perfectly well that you and lots of other people within Microsoft describe Java, J-A-V-A, -A, without talking about runtimes or EJBs or server middleware, Java, J-A-V-A, -A, as a competitive threat. You know that, don't you? I've told you that when we talk about the Java runtime threat, we often use Java as a shorthand for that. We haven't come up with another term for the Java runtime uh, competitive threat in its various forms. When did you um, first become concerned about the Java runtime threat to Microsoft? There have been a lot of changes in the strategy of Sun and, and various people. I know there was talk about job in the second half of 95, but you know I don't think we really understood what the various people around were doing. Um, sometime in 96, when uh, some was doing its its promotion of writing applications strictly to the Java runtime uh, to their Java runtime, which is one of them. Uh, in fact, they have multiple. Uh, then we would have looked at that as something we needed to understand and decide. Uh, how it affected our strategy. My question is not when you decided you needed to look at Java to decide something. My question is when did you first
conclude that what you have referred to as the Java runtime threat was a competitive threat to Microsoft? Objection. Well, it gets a little complicated because there's some of the, even the runtime pieces of Java that we support, but there's some things that people are doing in those runtimes that we have an, uh, a different approach. But that's all you know, more recent in terms of understanding how what our products are going to do. My question is when did you first conclude that what you have described as the Java runtime threat was a competitive threat to Microsoft? I think there was a lot of discussion about what to do with with the Java and Java runtime things. Uh, and there was a part of what Sun was doing that by late 96, uh, we had decided not uh, there's some extensions they were doing in late 96 that we thought of as competitive. Do I understand that last answer to be that it would not have been until late 1996 that you considered what you have described as the Java runtime threat as a competitive threat to Microsoft? Well, you used the word conclude, and <coughs> there's a, a long period of time where there's a lot of thinking about Java runtime inside Microsoft where people are going back and forth, and some people say, hey, this, this is fine, it's uh, not competitive, somebody should somebody would say, hey, maybe it is competitive. There's a lot of going back and forth. So when you use the term conclude, I assume you're talking about a point at which uh, there's a, a clear opinion and not just a lot of debate, uh, you know, even, you know, my, my view being established. And so then I, I think you've got to go as, as late as late 96 before uh, there's much clarity at all. I think you may have answered the question, but I, I want to be sure because my question relates not to what other people were saying within Microsoft, but what you believed. And what I'm trying to find out is when you, Bill Gates, first believed that what you have described as the Java runtime threat was a competitive threat to Microsoft. Well, you used the word conclude. In late Actually, in this last answer, I used the word believe. In the last question, I used the word believe. So you're changing the question. Well, uh, if believe and conclude is different for you, I'll, I'll ask it both ways. Yeah, um, it's, it's very different. In late okay, night. Okay, then let me ask the question so the record is clear of what you're. What you're you don't want to let me answer the last one? Or if that's what you're going to answer, let's read the question back so that we're sure. And would you um, reincorporate the question so that the record is clear? Uh, that what follows is <coughs> intended to be a response to this particular question. I think you may have answered the question, but I want to be sure because my question relates not to what other people were saying within Microsoft, but what you believed. And what I'm trying to find out is when you, Bill Gates, first believed that what you have described as the Java runtime threat was a competitive threat to Microsoft.
In the first part of 96, there were, I was getting a lot of different opinions about Java runtime and what some was doing and what we should do. I wouldn't say that I, I believed firmly that it was competitive threat because that all depended on what some was doing, what other companies were doing, and what we were going to do. By late 96, I think we had a, or I had a view that uh, what Sun was doing was uh, a competitive activity. When you talk about having a view that what Sun was doing was a competitive activity, uh, do you use the term activity to mean the same thing that you meant before when you used the term threat. Well, you were the one who used the term threat. And I'm, I'm not quite sure. It was competitive. Is, com is something that's competitive always a competitive threat? I'm not sure. Mr. Gates, I think the record will show, and, and if necessary, we can go back to it, that you used the term Java runtime threat. Do you recall doing that? Yes. OK. Now, that's not the same as competitive threat. Well, when you use the Java runtime threat phrase, what did you mean by threat? I meant that it was competitive. Okay. Um, uh, and so you were using, in that context, threat and competitive to mean the same thing? Yes. OK. Now, using threat in the same sense that you were using it to mean competitive. Uh, I want to ask what you said was the different question from what you believed. When did you conclude that the Java runtime threat was a competitive threat to Microsoft? Well, by late 96, I thought of it as competitive. And when you use the word thought there, are you using it to mean what you have said you meant by believe as well as what you said you meant by conclude? I mean, by then, <laughs> it was pretty clear to me it was another thing we had to think of in, in terms of the list of the com competitors, as opposed to earlier, where I wasn't sure of that. What did you do to try to respond to what you have described as the Java runtime threat? The same, same thing we always do, just innovate in our products and use the customer feedback to uh, delight them so that they choose to license our products. Uh, did you do anything else to try to respond to what you describe as the Java runtime threat? Well, we try to understand from customers what they're doing and how our strategy might appeal versus someone else's strategy, and then go back and look at our strategy to see if we can make it better. Did you do anything else? I'm not. I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, our whole activity here, everything we do really comes under what I, I just described. Everything Microsoft does comes under what you've just described. Is that your testimony, sir? Mm-hmm. Well, sir, it does um, uh, 
trying to undermine Sun uh, come within the activity that you've just described? Objective. I don't know what you mean by that. You don't? No. Um, uh, have you ever had discussions within uh, Microsoft about the desirability of trying to undermine Sun because of what Sun was doing in Java? I said to you part of our activity is to go out and work with customers to see what it takes to have them choose to license our products and that's in competition with many other companies including Sun. Would you read back the question please? within Microsoft about the desirability of trying to undermine Sun because of what Sun was doing in Java. We've certainly had discussions about making our products better than Suns and other competitors in any area that, that people might think of them as, as desirable. Uh, would you read the question back, please? I answered that question. Um, would you read back the question and the answer? Have you ever had discussions within Microsoft about the desirability of trying to undermine Sun because of what Sun was doing in Java? The answer, I said to you part of our activity is to go out and work with customers to see what it takes to have them choose to license our products, and that's in competition with many other companies, including Sun. I'm not now talking about what you do in competition with other products or other companies. What I'm talking about is whether or not you've had discussions with people within Microsoft in which you talked about the need to undermine Sun. Using those words, if that'll help you, um, uh, within Microsoft. I don't remember using those words. You don't? No. Do um, you, you think you did use those words? You just don't know one way or the other? I don't know. Uh, would it be consistent with the way you felt about Java for you to have told people that you wanted to undermine Sun? As I've said, anything about Java, you gotta, you got to show me a context before I can answer because just the term Java itself can mean different things. Well, let me try to approach it this way, um, Mr. Gates. Have you ever told anyone, um, regardless of what you meant by it, that you wanted to undermine Java, or undermine Sun, or undermine Java because of Sun? Any of those? And to be, I I said I don't recall using that word. Would it have been consistent with the way that you felt about Sun? and about Java for you to have used that word? And if you don't understand the question, I'll rephrase it. Well, Sun's message to the market and ours aren't the same. And so there is 
as part of that, that competition, a desire to get people to understand our message and what we're providing versus their message and what they're providing. So in, in that sense, there could have been a discussion around that that topic, I, but I still don't know if the word undermined was ever used. Did you have discussions um, with Apple um, that were directed towards attempting to uh, reduce or eliminate competition, Mr. Gates? No. Um, did you have discussions with Apple um, in which you were trying to get Apple to agree to help you undermine Sun? There was some discussion about what runtime APIs Apple would support, whether they would support some of ours or some of Sun's. Um, I don't think I was involved in any discussions myself with Apple about that. Well, let me show you a document and try to probe what you mean by being involved. Let me sh give you a copy of a document that has been previously marked as Government Exhibit 365. portion of this document is an email message from you to Paul Moritz and others. Um, and the portion that I'm particularly interested in, uh, and you can read as much of the three-line email as you wish, um, is the last sentence which reads, quote, do we have a clear plan on what we want Apple to do to undermine Sun, close quote. Did you send this email, Mr. Gates, on or about August 8th, 1997? I don't remember sending it. Do you have any doubt that you sent it? No, it appears to be email I sent. Um, you recognize that this is a uh, document produced from Microsoft's files, do you not, sir? No. You don't? Well, how would I know that? Well, do you see the uh, document production numbers down at the bottom? I have no idea what those numbers are. Um, uh, do you recognize this as the form in which email has been printed out by Microsoft? I don't know what that means. It's all email printed by anyone looks just like this. So the fact that it looks like this doesn't give you any clues to who printed it. Well, let's begin with that, sir. Email printed out by other people are not stamped with Microsoft confidential stamps and Microsoft document production numbers. You would agree with that, would you not? It has nothing to do with printing out. Do you understand my question, sir? No. Okay. Um, do you see down at the bottom uh, where there are are confidential stamps and a stamp that says attorneys only and document production stamps. You see those? I see the stamps. I can't characterize whether they're document production stamps. To me, they, they look more like you'd see on a prisoner's uniform. Um, uh, so that uh, you don't have any uh, knowledge about these stamps. It is your testimony. You I've never seen are. a stamp like that. I've never used a stamp like that. Haven't you seen stamps like that in every single one of the documents that you've been shown during this deposition? Can you get, get me all the exhibits? <laughs> yes. The one that has this document production stamp and this confidential stamp down in the bottom right-hand corner, is that the one you mean, Mr. Gates? Is that a stamp? It's, to me, that's not a stamp. Let me go back to the email, Mr. Gates. Um, Uh, 
What did you mean when you asked Mr. Moritz whether or not, quote, we have a clear plan on what we want Apple to do to undermine Sun, close quote? I don't remember. Um, did you uh, personally participate in any uh, conversations um, with Apple in 1997 and 1998? Of any kind? Um, let me be a little more specific. Did you participate in any conversations with Apple uh, in 1997 or 1998 concerning um, what Apple would or would not do uh, that would affect um, Microsoft competitively? Well, there were some conversations with Steve Jobs about Microsoft Office. Um, and some rela a relationship we formed around that and some other issues. And did you participate in those conversations? I talked to Steve Jobs on the phone, I think, twice. Um, and what was the nature of your conversations with Mr. Jo Mr. Jobs? Well, Steve had Steve called me up and said that he'd become the CEO of Apple, sort of, and that Gil Emilio wasn't the CEO of Apple. And he raised the question of was there some beneficial agreement that we could enter into um, different than we'd been discussing with Gil. And it wasn't a very long call, but the conclusion was that Greg Maffei would go see uh, Steve. What is uh, Mr. McFay as a title? At that time? Uh, what is his title today? His title today is CFO. Of Microsoft? Mm hmm Chief Financial Officer. Mm -hmm. um, and what was his title at the time? I think Treasurer. When did Mr. McFay uh, go to talk to Mr. Jobs? I don't recall the, the date. Approximately. Sometime in 97? This was after your conversation with Mr. Jobs? Yes. Um, did you have any conversation with Mr. Jobs or anyone else at uh, Apple uh, after your 1997 conversation with Mr. Jobs? I had a brief conversation with him again in 97 the night before a Mac World speech that he was given, giving, where I, I appeared as part of that speech, but it was about, about my role in his speech. Um, I'm going to leave that aside. Well, it all relates to the agreement with Apple. Okay, then, then I won't leave it aside. Um, 
Uh, what did you say to him and what did he say to you about the agreement with Apple? I said, it's not signed yet. <laughs> what, what are we going to do about this presentation if it doesn't get signed? And he said he hoped, hoped it would be signed. And then we talked about the logistics of appearing by video conference in the middle of his speech. Have you completed your answer? Yes. Um, other than the two telephone, or I guess one telephone conversation, one in person, was your the brief conversation you just recounted one in person? No, that was on the phone. That he was, was in phone. Boston, I was in okay. Seattle. That's Perfect. why I had to do a video conference right. to be in his speech. So that um, both of your conversations with Mr. Jobs in 1997 were by telephone? Is that correct? There may have also been some email between Steve and I. I don't think there were any more phone calls, but the two I've described are both phone calls. Um, there were no face-to-face -face meetings that um, I remember. Um, other than the two telephone calls and leaving email aside, uh, did you have any conversations, either by telephone or in person, with any representative of Microsoft in 1997 or 1998? Yes. Uh, other than the two um, telephone conversations with Mr. Jobs that you have um, already identified, during 1997 or 1998, did you have any conversations by telephone or in person with any representative of Apple? Trying to think when Heidi Royzen quit Apple. Uh, I think she had quit by '97, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she'd quit by then. So no, I don't think so. Do I take it from that answer that you had a conversation with Heidi Rosen? At some point in time that I can't remember. Yes. Okay. Uh, other than your possible conversations during the period with Heidi Rosen and the two telephone conversations in 1997 with Mr. Jobs. Did you have any other conversations either by telephone or in person with any representative of Apple in 1997 or 1998? No, I don't think so. To your knowledge, did any representative of Microsoft have any meetings um, or telephonic discussions? Certainly. With, with any representatives of Apple? Certainly. In 1998 um, concerning um, competitive issues? I don't know what you mean by competitive issues, but there's a ongoing contact with Apple. We're the largest developer of software for the Apple Macintosh, and so there's constant discussion with, with Apple. And as the uh, largest developer of uh, software for the Macintosh, um, is what you do uh, important to uh, Apple? Sometimes it doesn't seem like it. Uh, we always think of it as as important, but sometimes they don't they don't treat it that way. Sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned um, discussions with respect to Office. Um, would you explain for the record what you're talking about there? Microsoft Office. Uh, Microsoft uh, Office for Macintosh. Yes. 
Um, and was it your understanding that uh, Microsoft Office for Macintosh was believed by Apple to be uh, very important to them? I really have a hard time testifying about the belief of a corporation. I really don't know what that means. Well, sir, in, in making the decision that you would ask of Apple, um, did you believe that what you were offering Apple with respect to Microsoft Office for Macintosh was important enough to Apple so that they ought to give you something for it? I have no idea what you're talking about when you say ask. Um, well, let me show you a, um, a document that has been previously marked as a government exhibit 366. Um, uh, this is a document bearing uh, Microsoft document production uh, stamps MS 9801109525 through 53. Um, the first part of this purports to be a copy of an email from Dan, Don Bradford um, to Ben Waldman with a copy to you, Mr. Moritz, and others uh, on the subject of, quote, Java on Macintosh slash IE control. Uh, did you receive a copy of this email on or about February 13th, 1998? I don't know. Uh, do you have any reason to doubt that you received a copy of this email? No. Um, the first paragraph uh, reads, quote, Apple wants to keep both Netscape and Microsoft developing browsers for Mac, believing if one drops out, the other will lose interest and also not really wanting to pick up the development burden. Getting Apple to do anything that significantly, materially disadvantages Netscape will be tough. Do you agree that Apple should be meeting, it reads, do agree that Apple should be meeting the spirit of our cross-license agreement and that Mac Office is the perfect club to use on them? Uh, do you have an understanding of what Mr. Bradford uh, means when he refers to Mac Office as, quote, the perfect club to use on Apple, close quote? No. Um, the second sentence of that paragraph, the one that reads, getting Apple to do anything that significantly, materially disadvantages Netscape will be tough. Uh, was it your understanding in February of 1998 that Microsoft was trying to get Apple to do something that would disadvantage Netscape? No. Do you know why Mr. Bradford would have written this in February of 1998 and sent a copy to you? I'm not sure. Uh, did you ever say to Mr. Bradford, in words or in substance, in February of 1998 or thereafter, Mr. Bradford, you got it wrong. We're not out to significantly or materially um, disadvantage Netscape through Apple? No. Um, did you ever tell Mr. Bradford or anyone else um, in February 1998 or thereafter, that they should not be trying to get Apple 
to do things that would significantly or materially disadvantage Netscape? What was Mr. Bradford's uh, position in February of 1998? I think he had a small group in California that worked. Um, I'm not sure who he worked for. He probably worked for somebody who worked for Silverberg. No. No, I'm not sure who he worked for. Well, let's, uh, let's begin with what company he worked for. He clearly worked for Microsoft, correct, sir? That's right. Um, and do you know what his title was? No. Um, Do you know who Mr. Waldman is? Yes. Uh, what was his title in February of 1998? I don't know. What were his responsibilities in February of 1998? He, was, he ran a group that was doing Macintosh software. Neither of these guys have a title like vice president. That I can say for sure. So they, you know, they have a title like engineer or software engineer, software engineer manager. But I don't know their title. They're not executives. In addition to you and Mr. Moritz, copies of this go to David Cole, Dave Reed, Charles Fitzgerald, and John Devon. Um, do you know what Mr. Cole's position was in 1998? Yes. What was it? He was the VP. Actually, I don't know the VP, but, but he was a VP working for I don't know if we'd reorganized by then. Uh, he was in Maritz's organization somewhere. Um, what was um, Mr. Reed's position at that time? I have no familiarity with Mr. Reed. Do you have any familiarity with Mr. Fitzgerald and Mr. Devon? Yes. What were their positions? Uh, so Charles Fitzgerald was in the evangelism group working for Todd Nielsen. Todd Nielsen. And Mr. Devon? Mr. Devon was managing the overall office development. Um. Did you um, uh, have any conversations um, with anyone within Microsoft as to what position Microsoft should take with Apple in terms of what Microsoft should ask Apple for in return for Microsoft uh, developing Mac Office? What time frame are you in? 1997 or 1998? Well, it actually makes a, a big difference. We, we reached an agreement with Apple in 1997. And there's no, I'm not aware of any, any agreement other than the 1997 one. Could I have the question right back? Do you have any conversations with anyone within Microsoft as to what position Microsoft should take with Apple in terms of what Microsoft should 
ask Apple for in return for Microsoft developing Mac Office. Uh, 